Hey everybody, welcome to the Theomatic Podcast, the place that we are making good theology automatic. This is season two already. Thanks to everybody who joined us for season one. We're really excited for this season because we're going to be answering questions, your questions. Every episode is going to be a response and an answer to a question that somebody asked. And so we're so glad that you're with us. Every time that you leave a comment, rate, or subscribe, it helps get the word out for more people to join us. So make sure you do that on whatever platform you're listening on. And let's jump right into today's episode. Welcome. So glad that you're with us today. Today's episode comes from a question that we got on Instagram from at mm-hmm. Sapphire underscore 6155. Thank you, at I Sapphire. I wonder what the 6155 means. I hope it's not their pin code. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it is, change it right now. <laughs> yeah, if it is, you should switch it. But anyway, we're so glad to be answering specific people's questions. And we tried to yeah. choose uh, stuff that we thought the most amount of people would resonate with. Mm-hmm. And here's one that I think a lot of people have yeah. dealt with or experienced. So um, Sapphire, I don't know if this is a guy or a girl. I would guess a girl, but yeah. could be a guy. Anyway, they write, talk about fake Christians that make people question Christianity. So mm. maybe we can expand on that. Talk yeah. about maybe they mean hypocrisy or yeah. behavior that doesn't reflect Jesus. Right, or you know, people that would give themselves the label of Christian, but then don't act like a Christian, or maybe they have statements, thoughts, or behaviors that make Jesus look bad. Right. That's how, that's how I interpret the question. Yeah. And so maybe, it, and this is kind of more of a statement, but if, if you put it in question form, what do we do with yeah. people that like like this? How do we respond to them? And so we right. can have a conversation about all of that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Do you have a place you want to start? I or do. You me- okay. I have a place I want to start. You so, go and start then. So um, we, I think you're right on. I think we should deal with the question from like, what do we do about it? Um, let's just cover the other two things. What does God think about it? What does God say about it? Oh, right. Uh, God really dislikes it (laughs) um you know and this we can expand more at another time in another episode but like do not take the lord's name in vain is one of the ten commandments Mm -hmm. obviously what that i think really means is do not do something in my name and label it me that i did not command you to do or that i wouldn't command you to do oh i'm glad you went there we were i wasn't thinking we were gonna go there but yeah because i growing up Mm -hmm. do not say the term oh my goodness yes but the other one <laughs> right because because that, that period is taking the lord's name in vain yeah probably not which i still don't do to this day because i agree but like i've come to believe that commandment mm-hmm. is so much bigger than one little sentence yeah it i think it it denotes or connotes whatever the word is that, that if if you are a believer you carry the lord's name yes and you, you carry the representation of him and so yeah do not take it in vain do not carry him and represent him in vain and so let me give another uh passage that is and then you continue okay um second corinthians 5 Mm. you know tells us that we represent god in the way that we're his ambassadors yes correct so and that word is someone who has the authority the ring and the name yeah to do things in his name yeah Yeah, that's so is god against it yes Mm -hmm. because he's gifted us the weight and the responsibility of representing him mm-hmm. and then it says this as if he were making his appeal through us exactly okay so so, so there is scripture there's a body of scripture in fact i would say i think there's a 10 commandment written about it and it really grieves the lord when he's misrepresented mm-hmm. and um um the converse the flip side of that coin is like We ought to be careful how we represent him. I mean, Craig and I pray before every one of these recording sessions, and we understand the Bible says teachers are judged more harshly or strictly. We have a responsibility to be as accurate and authentic as we can be because we're representing him. We always call it, we brag on Jesus. We lift him up so that he can draw men to himself. We want to brag on him well. We want to right. represent him well in his heart. So so um, it's a serious issue. Um, that's why we chose this question to do a whole thing about it. And I think a lot of people are impacted by it, whether it's like, let's just put it in 2021, 2022 terms, like they have a political leaning and their father is claims to be a Christian. And now they're like, well, he has racist ideals. That's not God. So they're not a Christian. This is a mm-hmm. complex issue in today's society where political issues and political identity are dividing us as Christians. Mm-hmm. And so I, I have two thoughts. I'm going to kick it right back to you. Number one, 
for those of us who would believe we're authentic Christians and we're looking to assess or judge or determine if someone else is fake, we should really sling those words around carefully. Carefully. And we should handle it personally when we can. Mm. And um, I think there is a time to handle wow. something publicly, but only after we've tried to wow, handle it personally. Wow, that's a word for this generation. <laughs> for sure, right? Oh, man. Um, and I know people are afraid of confrontation or they'll say, well, that there's no use in talking to that person. Um, yeah, they won't listen to me if I talk to them anyway. <laughs> yeah, but there might be a use for you. Yeah. And, and, the, Bible, God's and the Bible didn't <laughs> ask you if you thought there'd be a use. Exactly. Or that they would listen to you. It's He, he tells you to he, go and talk to he them. He commands you to do it, not just so that they'll listen to you. In fact, there's like, if they listen to you, you'll win a brother for right. life. If they don't, it's still good for you to do. Right. And it gives them... It honors their agency and gives them an opportunity to adjust. It also, you might be wrong. I mean, Proverbs talks about the first person to give their side of the story always seems right until they're cross-examined. Mm. Maybe you're not seeing it right, or maybe something was taken out of context and you drew the wrong conclusion. So personal first, if possible. Yeah. Um, there's a moment where Paul calls out someone publicly. Um, it's rare. It doesn't happen a lot. Um, you know, I would be really cautious. Yeah, so there's precedent for there's it. There's precedent. But be very, very careful. parameters. Yeah. And we're talking about the Apostle Paul. Right. <laughs> so, so there's, like, yeah, there's. Yeah. It's like when Jesus authority. flips the tables, like that, I don't think that gives us permission yeah. to do it. Don't do that all the time. But like, <laughs> yeah. yes, there's a place yeah. for more what you say extreme, extreme things. Yeah. Or like even to, in today, like when's the last time you heard about a church kicking somebody out or excommunicating? Well, nobody ever does it because it's like, oh, how's it going to look? And, and you probably shouldn't do it that much. But there's still a but place there's precedent. for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Paul certain literally behaviors. talks about this in, in, in his doctrine to us. And it's in the epistles that when there's certain behaviors and you've personally talked to them and the church has confronted right. them there's and, a process. and there was an opportunity for them to change and they just won't do it. The Bible literally says, give them up yeah. to their own desires and they'll hopefully get humbled and come back. Yeah. And yeah. Well, yeah. And that's a good point is like in uh, first or second Corinthians five, where he's talking mm -hmm. about the the dude and sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. I love it because the heart is always, he said, he even said this, hand, hand him, him over to, to the devil. Satan. Yeah. But why? So that though his body might be uh, lost or destroyed, Ravaged, his yeah. soul might be saved. Come on. And that's the, the heart that's of the, the heart leader of is that it's always not just to shun somebody, but for the best outcome. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the extreme measure is needed for the outcome. But anyway, that's not the point of this, this podcast, today's episode. So I want to, I want to frame it in two ways. Um, for the sake of the question, mm -hmm. let's say the reality is, and I think you have a verse for this, that there are some people that are fake, 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 truly fake yeah. in that they are not an actual believer. They're faking it. Yeah, that's Another Matthew 7. Another word you could say would be a wolf in sheep's clothing. So if you read yeah. that verse real quick. Uh, Matthew uh, seven fifteen, um, it says, beware of false prophets, which comes to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. So we get a warning, beware, yeah. watch for them. So yeah. that means they are out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and that particular verse says false prophets. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily talking about just you know believer yep um i think one of the johns for second or third john is talking about those that were amongst us but they were not of us of us yeah, yeah. that's so, right I so there's just these that one. themes of like so okay so what's what's the reality there are some people that are not actually saved that are faking it mm -hmm. and they maybe have some other agenda or whatever even when it comes to preaching the gospel paul says some preach out of envy and rivalry others out of goodwill that's a great one philippians chapter one yeah okay so do Christians have a, a responsibility or a need to judge people in that way? I think that Daniel and I would say, yes, but we need to be really careful with that. Like really careful to judge somebody's, are you really saved or not? So just be really, yeah. really careful with that. Although it is true, some people are totally wolf. But let's just, if I can, unless you want to talk more about that. No, I think that, that's good. Let's put that one aside. I think it's a minor, like it, it happens less often than the other thing we should talk yeah. about. It definitely but happens. But we just wanted probably, to honor that it's in there. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that's, that's a real thing. It's in there. But let's talk more about what's what this question is probably really talking about and what more people are experiencing yeah. on a you know more day-to-day -day basis, which is, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's it's a person or people that they are actually saved. They they they're they're Christians, right? They're gonna they'll be in heaven one day. Yeah, they're but in their they process of sanctification, yeah, they, but they're at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do with people? And it might even be us. Yeah, sometimes it, might it is. Might be you. 
what do we do with people when, again, for the sake of argument, they're saved, but they're not really, they're just, mm-hmm. they're being fake or they're being hypocritical or they're- Or they have a huge blind spot and they don't see that so, what they're doing is really Anger, damaging to- gossip. Yeah, to someone. Yeah. Walking yeah. in habitual sin, they're, they're captured by addiction or, or maybe mm-hmm. they're influenced by demonic forces. I don't know. So what do we do? How do we interact with those people? And- and then how do we deal with the message that those people send to the world, making people, in this case, question Christianity is the question, or mm-hmm. making people look poorly upon Christianity. Yeah. So, okay, so what do we do with those people that are, yeah. they're real, let's just, you know, they're, they're yeah, saved, think, but they're I not. I think we should talk about what is our duty. What's our duty? Like, what, what are we called to do doctrinally, okay. you know? So um, there's an idea, it's interesting. We've never had public discourse in history the way we have it now, you know, like on Twitter or TikTok, where it's just like, I make a comment at one in the morning and now everybody knows what it is. Everybody you know, sees everybody it. Sees or it. public discourse that yeah. you can say the most severe things anonymously and, and with anonymity. Take no accountability for it. Yeah, it's totally. Such a so, new world we live in. We're, we're kind of on tilt as a society. I mean, it, and it wasn't. You know, the Bible, I believe, is is thorough in its its depicting God's heart. But some of the issues we face, like we have to find the principles and the nuance in the scripture. And so so with with public discourse, I want to talk specifically about correcting the record. What is our duty as Christians to correct the record when anyone says something is wrong? And um that is something that I think we have to handle a little bit more with more humility than is currently what I see anyway on my feeds. I see Christians neglecting the weightier issues of the law to correct an inaccuracy and, um, or throwing somebody mm -hmm. out, say a preacher, though they've said thousands of good theological, solid honoring things. They'll take one sentence and crucify them. hundred percent. Yeah. So cancel culture is in the church and we've already done another episode on, on why unity is so important. And yeah. so we should be very careful mm-hmm. not to say that you it's okay to or water down things that are false, but let's be careful with each other and mm-hmm. how we're dispensing judgment. Well, yeah. And sometimes I think we try to ma- major so much on the truth that we forget the love, right? And, right. and Jesus says, I came in grace <laughs> and, truth. and truth. Yeah. So, so um, truth is important. I'm not saying Absolutely. to neglect it. I'm saying season your speech with salt online, use humility. So what is your duty? Do you have to correct inaccuracies? I don't, I would say, I I think the Lord, this is my opinion of me. I'm just going to speak so personally. I feel like the Lord has led me in a way where it says, if I can't do it with salt, seasoned with salt and with love publicly, I shouldn't do it. I should let that inaccuracy go until I can do it in love. So that's what I felt led to do. Um, now, what if it's a grievous inaccuracy? It's like, okay, well, if you're led to correct it, correct it, but do it in love. So then what would the process be? Go to the person directly? Yeah, I message them <laughs> online. If it's online, I don't post oh, publicly. Um, so I'm just talking like in the digital space, but it, it's it, it's anywhere. Yeah, or in person. In person. You don't take a personal, if I have a- I don't with air Daniel, a personal grievance to, to the public. Right. Yeah, I don't- There's a process. You'd find part Holy of that smokes, process that's a huge thing in you just Matthew said. 18. Yes. Right, go to the person one-on-one. Mm-hmm. If you don't get anywhere, go with a, tr- a witness a witness mm-hmm. uh, and we would you know the assumption is that's a trusted spirit filled believing probably that both parties know maybe even was a witness to the original event yeah. that would probably be even better yep and then the mm-hmm. third step is a leader of the church yeah right and then the body of faith so there's a process there's a bunch here of gates. that so many people are yeah. and what we do is we have a personal grievance and we passive aggressively often vent it online and we accidentally destroy not accidentally. I mean, that's the device of the enemy by by giving all this information from your lens without any context or opportunity for the person to express, explain, or understand. We can damage their character, witness, and then we are now damaging their ability to minister in Christ. Yeah. And so it's it's really toxic. Or damaging the kingdom of God at or, large, or hurting our brother. So so. We would both, I think, agree that in any grievance, in any fake Christian scenario where they're misrepresenting Jesus, you should deal with it personally using Matthew 18 as the guideline in as much as humanly possible. And I think what a lot of people do, so the last thing I'm going to set you up, I'm going to give it right back to you. What if it's Craig from Bible time and someone out there that doesn't know you personally 
has a problem with something you said, or if I have a problem with something Joel Osteen says, and I think that they are misrepresenting, what should I do? Uh, should I just let it go? Should I do something? Um, you know, that's, um, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, and, and the more that, you know, we're in this field that lots of people hear from us and see us and we don't always get a chance to hear from them. And so, yeah, I mean, I, at least for me, well, let's put it like this. I'll just be really transparent. I came out of college with a degree in theology, judging everybody, hmm. just absolutely judging every single thing that I heard, thinking that I knew everything about theology. I knew everything about the Bible. I knew everything about God. I had the corner on hmm. truth. And I remember when I was dating my wife at the time, you know, my girlfriend, we would, we were doing house church and we would go to different churches on the weekend. And I remember one day Jess said, I'm not going to go to visit churches with you anymore. Hmm. All you do is is have negative things to say about the sermon or that preacher or the worship team or how are they doing their greeting team or anything. And I was like, wow. And so God used her to really like put me in check. Like, wow, dude. Like, And so one of the reasons that I'm at the church that I'm at now is when I was at that younger age, um, I knew the Lord was saying, you're kind of like a rogue theologically and you need to you need to learn what it is to be under authority wow so i was so judgmental and so the lord has humbled me and softened me in many ways i still have a ways to go but i i am not the person i used to be come on but amen. one of the ways that he's softened me is it's also really easy to judge when you're sitting in the stands judging what people on the field are doing and when you get on the field and you're in the battle and you're leading people and you're you're doing your best to build the kingdom and you recognize, yeah, I do make mistakes. It's not like I'm trying to, I'm yeah. trying to serve people and, and preach the gospel and all this. And I might say something wrong or lead wrong or interact with that person wrong. And you start to realize, wow, I do make mistakes because now I've experienced being a leader. It really softens your heart to, to judge other leaders a little bit less. And so I see this in person and I see this online, online. whether it be TikTok or Twitter or wherever, just people throwing so much hate or canceling or pulling one sentence out of context. And it just ha makes me ask like, dude, are, are your hands in the mud? Like, are right. you, are you leading? And yeah. uh, where's this coming from? So, but, but, but it doesn't. So the question is about like there, there, so there is negative behavior mm -hmm. and, and is it okay? No. Yeah. Is it like, so we do need to grow in that, but this, you know, what we've been talking about a lot is like, well, how do we deal with that? And what do we do with judgment and all those things? So I would say you got to think about both. Mm -hmm. You got to think about, yeah, we don't want to just say everything's okay because there's behavior that's not okay. What, what would you say is your duty as a Christian in a church or that knows someone? What's your, like, what's your take on that? Like, do they need to get into each other's lives and hold them accountable? Like, I think that it's nuanced, mm -hmm. but I definitely think that Tupac was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac had the song, Only God Can Judge Me. And, you know, in a sense, he's right. Ultimately God speaking, has the final word. God has the final judgment. Yeah. But I think a lot of Christianity has taken that or, or taken maybe out of context Jesus's words uh, in the Sermon on the Mount about judgment. And, and we've now applied categorically to all of Christendom. We are not to judge each other. We are not to judge ever. Don't ever judge. Yeah. And the truth is, that's exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. Now, both both are true. We are not to judge as a Pharisee with a negative, self-righteous, I'm better than you, you're horrible. No, no, no. Not that, yeah, we're not to judge like that. Yeah. But Paul clearly says in Corinthians, especially when he's talking about the dude who was committing heinous sexual immorality with his father's wife, he says, we are not to judge those who are outside the church or an unbeliever, but we are, are to, to judge, judge yeah, those in that. the church. And so what does he mean by that? Of course we know that he mean doesn't mean self-righteously, I'm judged. No, no. But we are to discern yeah. right from wrong. Within and the by wall, the way, yeah. everybody acknowledges that there's a judgment that we absolutely agree with and need. If you go to court you're expecting that judge to pass a righteous, lawful, just judgment or discerning on what's happened in this court case. Hundred percent. We expect judgment, and yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. We expect if you're playing a sport for that referee to, to make, make the a right good calls. judgment call. Yeah. 
Th those are all everyone playing agrees like everybody yeah. makes judgment calls every day is yeah. something right or wrong that is not the same as thing as being judgmental in a self-righteous yeah. way so can we just agree that judgment yeah in certain I context agree. is not only good yeah it's and this is gonna set a lot of people off we probably should do like i'd like to commit to doing another episode on on judgment because people are like whoa you can't it's in there and it's another place you know where where um where paul is uh Oh, I just lost my thought. But let me go back to this. Um, we, we need to do a full episode on it because how to do it has really been lost. There's an art. Um, I find that we have it together. Like, like um, it, we've had several disagreements in our friendship and we've come to the table. No one else was there. And if we couldn't have figured it out, I guarantee we would have gone to someone that we both trust and right. had them help sort us out. Oh, now I got my thought. Paul says, don't sue each other. Like we should be able to work this out here. Don't you know we judge the angels? Yeah. Right. So like we ought to be able to judge for ourselves. So there is a lost art and I think it deserves its own episode on how to do that. But it is in there and you can adjudicate both in disagreements and you can assess behavior, whether it to be righteous or healthy or not. Now, how you handle that, there's a prescription in the Bible, Matthew 18. But more than that, there's a heart. And this is what I'll end with saying. We should have a critical mind, but not a critical spirit. Mm. We should have a critical mind when we're assessing. Like think critically. Yeah, think critically. Like, but when, but don't have a critical spirit. Oh, I and love I think that. that's the difference, right? I love that. So, Craig, what I see in you is you have a critical mind because you're called to build the church. And so, of course, you had because strong truth matters. <laughs> truth matters. So. Yeah. So, of course, you had opinion when you were young on every little thing, but your wife is saying, I'm tired of this critical Girl's spirit. Just, yes. Oh, that's spot I love on, your bro. critical that's mind, so, Craig. That's spot on. But keep it in line with a with a spirit because the Bible says love always hopes. Right. 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 right? Like, let's keep the, the hope. Spirit alive, that's right? full of grace. Yeah, full of grace. And love the love of Jesus, and yeah, yeah. I love that, dude. Yeah, thanks. That's, so that's maybe, that... yeah, maybe we'll do another episode yeah. on that. Um, I'll just say one last thing about the because I was more talking about promoting judgment <laughs> in a healthy in way. In a healthy but way, I just you're saying say, that it's been lost, and we've really yeah, abandoned. Lost, so... We've swung the pendulum so far that it's not. Biblical. Don't judge anybody. Don't judge anything. Yeah, no, well, no, no, no. That's well, not gonna, right. Yeah, we're gonna say this is a sin, and it's not okay. But it's how you go about. So I would just say. Number one, have you earned the right to be heard in that person's life? Ooh. Are you even the right person to be bringing that up to them? Um, and then following the process of Matthew 18. And um, and then, you know, don't go and gather a whole army to agree with you, which really is gossip. Yeah, that's to gathering go allies, to them. no good. Yeah. yeah. So Go in just, humility, tenderness, and vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. So be really careful with how you, how you tackle that if you feel led to tackle that. Um, and then for the person, which again, it might be any one of us that is misrepresenting Jesus, when you, like, number one, let's not do that. Number two, <laughs> yeah. when we realize Please that don't. we have. Own it. Own it. I I actually think that, to use two examples, like, let's just say the Christian that is perfect all the time is, is sending off a, a good witness in a sense. But I also think that there's something to be said for... Uh, a person that's genuinely trying to follow Jesus does something wrong. And I'm saying this from experience. Yes. Does something wrong in front of their unbelieving friends. And then instead of just like brushing it off, but that Christian owns it and shows their unbelieving friends what repentant man yes. I messed up. I I have experienced those moments to be such the best a wit witness, such a witness for Christ. I 100% agree. Because that's not what the world does. And that unbelieving person is like, wow. So that's what a humble Christian looks like. That's and it, I think Craig. it speaks sometimes even more than a perfect Christian. Now, again, we should strive to do right. It's a beautiful process, it's though, a right? beautiful process is that the Lord that has, the gospel. Ha has made a way for us to be imperfect and be sanctified but and, and to be a light. That's the word, right? No turning of shadow in us. Don't do one thing and then hide it. Don't be that fake Christian. Live in the light. And when you make a mistake, go back and keep the light on and be like, you know, I do it with my kids. I say, you know, daddy's not perfect. This, this wasn't God's heart. I should never have reacted mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And I, cause I know that they will equate his goodness to mine. And I have to always assure them that it's so much more. And so whenever I fall short, I go, this isn't what he's like. This is what I'm like. And I'm trying to get better. Will you forgive me? Keep the light on it. That's good. I love it, dude. 
Awesome. Well, do you have any other final thoughts? No. Um, just a, let me just do a quick wrap up. Is being fake Christian wrong? Yeah. Grieves God's heart. He hates it. Absolutely. What's your duty? Your duty is to judge and call out obvious sin that corrupts the community or um, um, wrecks the, 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 the perception of Jesus in the public, but because they will know uh, us by our love for one another. They will know him by our love for one another. Do it personally and follow the prescription in humility. I think that's the summary. Make sure that it's covered with love. Covered with love, yeah. And yeah, I guess I'll just, my final thought would just be your, what you said earlier, because I loved it so much. And so maybe you need to say it again. Have a critically thinking mind that thinks according to God's word, but make sure you don't have a critical, critical spirit. spirit because that's... um harmful to the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. probably most likely going to be harmful to the other person and probably cancerous to your own soul. You're, yeah, that's it. It's not so, going to be good for you either. Yeah. Anyway, um, awesome. let's, let's all strive to honor Christ in what we do. And when we fall short, yeah. let's humbly repent and, and yes. own it and turn back to Yeah. Him. And thank so, you for the questions. Keep them coming. We love it. Thanks thank for you. The questions. We'll see you guys next episode. Peace. Hey, thanks for joining on today's episode. We're so glad that you're with us. If you missed season one, you could find that right here. And if you missed last week's episode, you could find that right here. And every time you subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, it helps get the word out. And we're so glad that you're with us on this journey. We'll see you next time.